So in this short tutorial video, I'm going to be showing you as to how to calculate the EC50 value or the potency of an agonist in graph pad prism. So before we jump into the prism file, let me introduce you to my raw data first. So here on the top, I have stimulated my cells with a stimulant drug at a single concentration of minus 5 molar or it is 10 raised to the power minus 5 molar basically it's the log concentration and I have three values arranged in a triplicate so underneath that I have values for my agonist or inhibitor drug across a range of different concentrations starting from minus 15 molar or 10 raised to the power minus 15 molar all the way up to my highest concentration which is minus 5 molar or 10 raised to the power minus 5 molar and as you can see against each concentration there is a data and triplicate so again my highest concentration as I said is 10 raised to the power minus 5 molar and we also call it 10 micromolar my lowest concentration is 10 raised to the power minus 15 molar which is here and you know that we also call it 1 femtomolar so let's copy all this data and paste it into a prism file and let's see how our analysis looks like so this is how your prism file looks like when you open it for the first time so we are basically interested to plot our values from the Excel sheet and draw a concentration response curve which will be a sigmoid curve and it will let us calculate the EC50 or the potency of our agonist so as you can see in the left handle we have a choice of different graph types now in order to draw a concentration response curve you need to choose the XY plot from the given choices now just leave this X values bit for now this is for our Y values so since our data is in triplicate so let's check this box let's check this circle rather and since we have a triplicate so it is okay if for example we had a duplicate so you will reduce this to 2 so let's make it 3 and then press create there you go so this is our X column where we shall plot our X values or concentrations from the Excel sheet then for Y axis we have group A group B and so on as we have only one agonist so we shall put our values in group A only if we had multiple agonists for example we could make use of the remaining columns so let me copy my data for the X values or concentration values from the Excel sheet so let's copy our X values from the Excel sheet select all these log concentrations let's copy and open the prism file right click paste paste data yeah so our X values are arranged in the X column and now let's go back to the Excel sheet copy all these concentrations the values or the response copy go back to prism right click paste paste data yes so against each concentration you have data arranged 
and triplicate and that will be plotted on the y-axis so this will be our response on the y-axis and these will be our concentrations on the x-axis and as I mentioned if we had more agonists we can plot our data here and get multiple curves. Now that I have plotted my y values for the agonist let's go back into the Excel sheet and copy values of our stimulant compound which is here so select copy go back to prism and let me paste these values here yeah so now I have put all my data here on the prism sheet so these are my x values or the concentration values the log concentrations these are my responses from the agonist all the way down to here and these three values are my stimulant drug for the stimulant drug basically so yeah let's go further next we are gonna transform our y values into percent values because we are interested in a percent response or percent inhibition of our compound so let's convert or transform these values into percent values for that click analyze here you can see it says transform and normalize so go to normalize hit OK here you can see it says subcolumns average the subcolumns yeah how is 0% defined so smallest mean in each data set yes how is 100% defined so largest mean in each data set and percent results as percentages so we are okay so let's press OK so as you can see here that our response values or the agonist values and the stimulant values are converted into percentage responses yeah so you can see the highest inhibition has taken place at the highest concentration these are the percentage responses of our stimulant drug which are close to 100 or more than 100 percent and then for the lowest concentration of the agonist you can see here that it has a very weak action at the lower doses as compared to the higher doses so the next part of our prism analysis is to draw a concentration response curve so in order to obtain that uh, let's press analyze go to XY analysis and yes we need a non-linear regression curve fit so press OK so then you have a range of different choices here so dose response stimulation dose response inhibition so since our compound is an inhibitor so let's select this and then you are again seeing that we have different uh, parameters to be selected according to the experiment that you have so we have our log inhibitor doses here versus normalized response so I choose this bit because 
I've normalized my Y values and this will be a variable slope so let's click this a dialog box opens here so which says if X is not already the log of those go back and transform your data so my X values are already in the form of log doses or log concentration so I'm good to go so yeah press OK and there you go the prism gives you these values straight away it's a very smart software so here you can see the best fit values it's telling you the log IC50 or log EC50 value which is minus 10.67 the next important thing is the IC50 value that was our aim or we call it EC50 value which is 2.12 into 10 raised to the power minus 11 yeah it's kinda weird I will explain it further and if you come down to the goodness of fit here so you have R squared values which is 0 0.9906 so this value should be close to 1 and this represents that we have a good data fit so let's come here normalize of data and you can see a beautiful sigmoid curve so we have to play around with the x-axis uh, x-axis here sorry yeah and y-axis because we see that there's a lot to be done here we have a y value which is projecting downwards into the negative values we want it to start from zero and again the values on the x-axis are not properly arranged so my highest concentration was minus five it is showing zero and my lowest concentration was minus fifteen so we'll do that later on let's uh, change these X titles and Y titles first so I'll type in log yeah it comes up log PN6047 molar concentration so my agonist is basically PN6047 which is a novel analgesic compound and I have researched this compound basically during my lab experiments so for the Y values we can change it to the percent response yeah so just click this this is our percent response so as you can notice that we have a very long Y axis which is projecting downwards so in order to cut that axis extra bit of axis we have to double click the Y axis and uncheck this box so this is my range the minimum is minus 50 here so let's change it to 0 this is our 0 and the max is 150 as you can see here so instead I change it to 100 so my major tick interval is 50 which is okay I don't want any minor ticks so zero ticks no ticks hit OK there you go a very nice Y axis starting at zero showing 50 percent response and then 100 percent response so as you can see my X axis needs sorting so double click the X axis uncheck this box so my minimum is minus 20 I want it minus 15.8 and the maximum should be minus 4.8 
So mind you, this comes with experience. So if you play around with this software, one day you will be able to know how to set these ranges. So my major tick interval here is 5. I want my major ticks with a space of 2. So my starting x-axis is here minus 14 so it's basically starting at minus 15 uh, hit OK there you go so now that my y-axis and x-axis have been sorted out uh, here my highest concentration is minus 5 molar all the way down to minus 15 molar as my lowest concentration and there is a jump in concentration there is no minus 6 there is no minus 8 there is no minus 10 there is no minus 12 there is no minus 14 so it looks all okay let's proceed further so at this stage if you click any of these error bars for example I click here a dialog box opens and it says that plot is standard deviation or SD I want my data in the SEM or standard error mean form so I want to change all data sets and use SEM error bars instead of SD error bars so hit OK and it converts all my error bars into SEM form rather than the standard deviation form. So I personally don't like this normalize of data one bit so let me delete this. So here I will show you one cool feature of PRISM that you can include your IC50 value and show the value up here right on your graph so press anywhere here right click press insert info or analysis constant and it shows the nonlinear fit of normalize of data 1 data set A I click data set A best fit values double click it says IC50 value which is 2.12 double click and yes there you go it shows up your IC50 value of the compound here so let me pull it here so now I want to introduce a text into this graph so click this and type in EC50 space is equal to Um, yeah so looks good and this 50 is basically my subscript so yeah I don't like it this way so let me change it change it according to my style So multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 11 and this minus 11 is basically a superscript so yeah looks better so my EC50 value is 2.125 into 10 raised to the power minus 11. So I hope this helps. If you have some comments, please write to me in the comment section below.